Income Tax 2021-2022 Standard Deduction Using Income Tax Software. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Here we are in our Lacert Tax software. If you don't have access to it or any tax software, that's okay. You can still follow along. You might want to get a PDF file of the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. The tax software helping us to do the data input a little bit more quickly, run different scenarios, being able to then jump on over here to the forms to the 1040 and see what the impact is. Now, in a prior presentation, we looked at the different filing statuses of single, married filing joint, married filing separate, head of household, qualified widow, widow where we went through them in a bit of detail. And one of the major implications is the impact of what we're looking at now. That's the standard deduction down below. So we won't go through that whole scenario again. If you want to look at the impact on the standard deduction from the changes of the filing stand standards, then you can take a look at that prior presentations. So we're going to go into some of the more kind of unusual items we talked about with regards to uh, the standard deduction last time or in the prior presentation. So for example, we've got the standard deduction here. Someone can claim you. So if someone else could claim you as a dependent, then you want to be checking off this box. If it was your spouse, your spouse, that would mean you'd be filing married, filing joint in the second box. So if I was to check that off, for example, I can jump back over and say, I'm going to be saying that I could be claimed as a dependent and then jump back on over to the tax return. And we could see that that box would then be checked off here. Then we have this box to be checked if you were a dual status alien spouse itemizes on a separate return or you were a dual status alien here. If you were a dual status alien and you file a joint return with your spouse who was a US citizen or resident alien at the end of 2021 and you and your spouse agree to be taxed on your combined worldwide income, then you don't check the box. So that's going to be that box here. If you or your spouse, if you were married and filing a joint return, were born before January 2nd, 1957, or were blind at the end of 2021, you've got these boxes here, blind uh, and born before. So those are gonna be the requirements that, or those are gonna be items that are gonna increase the standard deduction. So let's take a look at those. So now we've got Adam and Eve being married here, married filing joint. And then down here, we're gonna say box being checked were born before January 2nd, 1957. And we got the second one checking the blind status. That's gonna have an impact primarily on the standard deduction down below, which before, if you were married filing joint would be the 25,100, but now it has been adjusted upwards. One place you can find that, this kind of bounces us over to the 1040 SR if you would like to file that instead of, although it's a little bit different format, but it has that page four with the calculation now we've got married and two of these conditions are met and that's where you get the 27 8 which if i go back to the 1040 is going to be that 27 8. if i was to double check that in my worksheet i would do something like this there's the hundred thousand this is going to be equal to the standard deduction for married which was 25 1 plus you've got two of these conditions being met one being one spouse was over the age limit and we have a blind condition, so I'm going to add those in twice, and that's where we're going to get the 27.8, getting us to the 72.2. So the 72.2 then is going to be our line item down here on the taxable income. So another kind of unusual situation we want to take a look at is what if you're you're married? So now you've got the components of being able to file married filing joint or married filing separate. You decide to file married filing separate. Well, then the IRS is going to be skeptical that you're going to try to take advantage of both the standard deduction and the itemized deduction, which are kind of limiting. So if you file married filing separate, now we're going to say Adam here, married filing separate. What if his spouse is claiming an, an itemized deduction? We got to mark that off down here. You got to say, okay, now spouses itemizes on a separate return or you were a dual status alien that is checked off and that's going to have an impact on the standard deduction here. So now it's taking basically the itemized deductions because you're required to itemize because you can't split up the tax return of one entity, which is basically a married entity they're, they're thinking here and then take advantage of both the, the itemized components and then uh, the standard deduction by filing married filing separate would be kind of the general idea, at least as I interpret it. So the next thing, we're gonna go back to the original scenario where we're, we're single this time, Adam Smith, 
regular scenario 100,000 here and the standard deduction at 12,550. Now we're gonna say, well, what if we check this box off, the president election campaign? Uh, check here if you or your spouse is filing jointly, want $3 to go to this fund, checking a box will not change your tax or refund. So let's kind of just double check that. Let's take a look at what our tax or refund is at this point in time and punch it into the trustee calculator. We're currently at the the amount of one five two. Well, let's go to the tax up top. Total tax is at the one five oh one five. And now let's say we're going to take that three dollars and uh, send it in. So we're going to say three dollars is going to the fund here. Let's jump to that data input and say one and I'm going to check that box off checked it off and then if I go back to my summary if I go to the tax summary we're still at the tax of the 15 uh, one five and I believe the total amount still the same uh, one five two eight five and if I bring it back on the other way and say let's take this off boom and then go back on over we're at the 15 two eight five and now we've unchecked the box for the three dollars there now the other one they've been stressing here is this item at any time during 2021 did you receive sell exchange or otherwise dispose of any financial interest in any virtual currency so they're concerned with that whole virtual currency type of thing which can be confusing to a lot of people and so the question is you know are what are is what you're dealing with virtual currency did you have virtual currency transactions if yes then you got to put yes here and then you got to determine if there's any kind of income related to the virtual currency so obviously we could check that off if we wanted to and have the virtual currency now if you check off yes here on the virtual currency you would think that the irs would be expecting to have some kind of transaction related to virtual currency gains or losses or something uh, like that so so you might in some cases you might need to do you know more research on what is virtual currency what kind of things uh, might qualify that you've d done transactions in for virtual currency and so on and so forth and and uh, make sure that you're in alignment with your income tax reporting with regards to any kind of virtual currency exchanges.